Hey guys, what's happening? Happy Sunday. Alright, so in my last video, I showed you this uh, CB lot score that I got an offer up. And uh, the thing that I was the most interested in and kind of the most excited about was this linear amplifier. Um, so it's a Palomar TX100. I mean, it definitely looks pretty messy. Like uh, I also got the CB, this uh, Teddy, uh, present Teddy. I guess supposedly with the SSB mod. So I'm going to look at that. But all right. So yeah, this thing is definitely a mess. Here's the top lid kind of bent up. All three of the switches in front are broken. So I'm going to get new switches. Um, but yeah, it's, it looks how messy this thing is. So that looks like, uh, at first, when, in the pictures, I thought that it looked like rust. And then I realized now it's, it looks like it's just old dried flux. So I'm going to rewire it. And obviously these wires are super old, stiff. So as far as I know, this is from the 70s. It's They, they were mainly used for CBs, but you can use also use them for hammer radios. Um, I guess it's, I mean, I don't, I think these were put on afterwards, these rivets, because it kind of covers up some of the text there. So, um, yeah, it's definitely messy. So I'm going to spend a couple hours cleaning this thing up. Maybe some rubbing alcohol. Um, but I actually found a schematic online, so, and actually I watched a really good video last night. Uh, what's it called? Gatekeeper Amps. And he kind of really went through uh, how these amps work, you know. Not just this specific amp, but amps in general, linear amps. How basically it's just like a, you know, it's basically a, you're creating like a transformer here, you know. And it's it's almost like a, you know, I'll, I'll maybe I'll put a link in the video down below, but it's kind of hard to describe. But he went through it. It was a really good video on how these things work, so... So, from what I, I've read and all the other videos of other people online that have made the videos about these, um, it looks like they do, I mean, 100, 100 amps, or 100 watts, and um, up to like 200 amps, or 200 watts. Um, I'm not sure. So, I'm going to go through, go through here, maybe toothbrush, really finely, fine. I might, and then I also got some electronics cleaner, can of this stuff right here, electric clean. Um, it's all I could find locally here. Like my, 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 I'm, I'm in Costa Mesa, California. My, I have a Marvac, so I might go there tomorrow to get the switches. And then, um, all right, so, yeah, it looks like there's some, just some things here. And I also noticed last night that there was a screw down here and stuck down here. So I gotta get, the, I gotta get that screw out of there. So, I feel like regardless of what if this thing is broken, I, I mean, I can probably get most of the components. Um, I mean, this is, I guess, considered a two-pill uh, amplifier. And uh, the, so those are the basically the transistors. So these are, actually, I've never seen transistors, transistors like this. But I don't ever usually work on a lot of radio equipment. Uh, most of the stuff I work on is like 3D printer and CNC boards. Um, and other sort of electronics related to like ARM processors. Um, you know, firewalls and that kind of stuff. S SOC Linux. Um, okay, so, yeah, that's cool. So the, that's what they call them, pills, where they look like these little pills. Um, all right, so if you're new to my channel, um, I don't really, I'm not really, I'm not, I mean, I'm into ham radio. It, it's interesting to me, the, the technology behind it. Um, so this is just going to be for like a CD setup, maybe. But, you know, I mean, this obviously this is illegal to run on 11 meters. Um, but I just thought it'd be interesting to restore this thing. It'd be kind of fun, fun project. So first thing and first, I'm gonna probably put this in like a ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna have to see if I can hit with a body hammer, pound those dents out, and then um, maybe repaint it. Maybe I did see another guy online. I mean, I do actually have blue LEDs. He changed it to convert these to blue LEDs, and it looks actually better with the blue LEDs. I think you know. So I might do that. I mean, I've I have sort of colors, but and he actually did make a point that it matches this blue stripe right here. So, um, yeah, those wires are horrible. He even says specifically don't broadcast this on CB. So, yeah, it looks like they've done some different kind of thing here. So, okay, for first phase of this video, I'm just going to clean everything up. I should probably see if it works before I put, maybe hook up some power to it. 
you know, I don't, I like to listen to stuff, but I don't really like to talk, so it's not, that's why I probably would never, I mean, originally I was studying for my ham radio license, but then I realized that, you know, I'm never going to talk on this thing. Um, so, yeah, it's more, to me, it's more about the technology, and actually more of like emergency preparedness. So, I'm just going to hit that, uh, probably have to hold it down, see if I can pound those out. You know, I wish I could, um, put the whole thing in there. I mean, the whole radio, I mean, great, but I don't want your water and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of those components you just can't get anymore, you know? Um, like, these things are like... Like, can you even get these transistors anymore? I mean, I know I've seen more modern ones, like Toshiba ones, but... Um, yeah, this AMF. Like, where the hell did I even get that thing at? Um, yeah, it's really interesting how these things work with the relays and stuff. And <clears throat> this one actually has a preamp and uh, SSB AM mode. So, yeah, because I really I want to get on. What interests me the most about the CB thing was was the LSB and USB. Um, because I actually have an SDR play. So I do actually have an SDR play. And that feeds up to my, my antennas here. Um, so actually, I can see I, I mean, there's a lot of action here in my 11 meter band. So, um, CB 11 meter. Um, so actually, in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook that up to my Raspberry Pi. Because right now, this is connected to my in-house in computer, which is my main computer. But um, what I want to do is hook up to a Raspberry Pi. That way I can go, pretty much get the run the thing from any computer in, internally. You know, another thing I wanted to do is, you know, actually what got me into this whole radio thing to begin with was SDR. You know, software-defined radio. So... I actually like, I want to get one of those uh, QRP transmitters, uh, SDR transmitters, like the Hermes 2 Lite, or the, they even have one for the Raspberry Pi now. Um, but I want to be able to amplify the signal through a QRP, QRP uh, SDR. So that was another reason for this thing. Um, is to be able to, you know, take 5 watts and basically increase it to like 200 watts. Um, yeah, this is really just like an emergency type thing. It's not really... I mean, like I said, I might talk a little bit on here and there just to check to see if I can get out. But I don't picture myself chatting it up on the on the radio. All right, so I'm going to give it an initial wash down, like I said, with electric clean. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to use this stuff called Blue Shower. I don't even exist anymore. We're talking like in the 80s, though, in my RC car days. Um, that's actually what got me in all this electronic stuff, was my RC cars. I was probably like six or seven years old, and we, we had like the RC10s and the, the Frog and... This is like in the 80s, early 80s, you know, the NICAD RC cars. So, um, but yeah, back then, I used to go to Mar Marbex, been around forever, electronics. And I used to go to, uh, you know, we used to get blue showers, but it was super cheap back then. Now, I mean, this thing was 12 bucks as I can. It's crazy. So I, I don't I want to make sure I don't, this stuff's not corrosive to like the, the lettering, you know, of, of the device. So I'm going to do just to quick test because I want to make sure I don't lose like the lettering so in case I got to replace the device I'm not going to lose like the I mean, even though this, this actually is electronics coating um I'm okay I'm gonna do a first clean off with the with the cleaner but I just want to make sure that it's not gonna remove any sort of like lettering um okay I'm gonna go back I have to get that screw out of there. Um, but I'm going to get all the dust, dirt off, and then I'm going to go back with probably alcohol and like Q-tips and get all that old flux off. All right, I got my first stage of cleaning done, but I noticed that... I don't know if I did that or it was like that. I'll have to go back to that video, but I know I touched it and I kind of feel like it sort of cracked a little bit. So the plastic is really... Yeah, let's see if I can glue that back on together a little bit. This doesn't kind of stays together. But yeah, I got that screw out. It looks like it might have gone right here. So, um, yeah, I got the faceplate a little bit clean. The bottom of the heatsink is crazy dirty, so I had to get that done. I don't know if you guys can see this, but what I'm doing is I'm just soaking this stuff in like rubbing alcohol, and I'm going back and come back. But I noticed that way, rub, I let it soak, it comes off a lot easier. So, this one's getting more soaking. But you can see what I've kind of done already. Way better. Alright, I already got probably, I don't know, 20 minutes into this already. Just cleaning these things off right here. Yeah, this is, to me, this is fun, though. Alright, it's getting cleaner. 
a lot of Q-tips, a lot of patience. I don't know if I mentioned this, I, in the lineup, I figured this probably cost me about 20 bucks, probably. Because the original ad was for 25 and then I kind of did like a whole lot deal. So, um, yeah, I figured probably, I mean, 25 bucks maybe, 20 I, I don't know. Um, but I got a whole bunch of stuff, so... I mean, I got this thing for super cheap, so if I get it to work, that'd be pretty cool. You know, I think this lid must have been off for a while, because these wires were in the sun or something, because... These were red wires at some point. Yeah, we got red here. And this, this, you can see where it's kind of red here. So all these internal wires were red too. Um, I mean, I could replace all that if I wanted to, but as long as they're getting good contact. But yeah, I'm always going to replace this. I'm thinking, I mean, I have some. This is stuff I use for 3D printers when I fix 3D printers, but this is 14 gauge wire. I don't, I don't even know the average rating. I, I gotta calculate how much, how thick of a wire I need, but it looks like it's thicker than what's on there. But I think I probably need maybe like 12 gauge wire or something, maybe 10 or 12. All right, so if this thing is shorted, my bent supply should hopefully. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna stand back here, <laughs> put my safety goggles on here. Mm. I'm not pulling a current. Mm, that's not a good sign. Alright, so I'm not even getting power to the passive main switch, so take a look here. So, I'm getting 12 volt here. So I'm getting power fed to the switch, but on the other leg of the switch, I'm not getting any sort of voltage. So, nothing here. LED obviously is not going to be powered on if I don't actually have power to this rail right here. So, um, yeah, the, the rails are actually really easy to figure out because it's such, such an old device. It's not like it's a complicated multi-layer PCB. You know, when I'm looking here, which is odd, I don't know, I might look at the schematic and see that I figure that out, but this main 12-volt feed, come out, my, my, this main 12-volt feed, This, I don't even know, I'm not even sure what this device is. This thing right here. This thing is all, this would be constantly on. So, the way it's wired like that, so as long as this, this amp actually had power, you'd be getting power to this board right here. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if it's supposed to be wired. Like, it doesn't seem like it'd be smart from factory. Having something live right here. I gotta figure out what that thing does though. Alright, so I did look at the schematic. I'll put the schematic down below. I'll upload it to my GitHub page. Um, so that's actually a Zener diode. I've never seen a Zener diode like that before. So, so that's what that is. Um, here's the lid cover after I ultrasonic cleaned it. So it has an interesting texture paint. I think I'm gonna just hit, some, hit it with some paint and see what happens. Rub it down with some alcohol first, and then see that looks. And if worst case scenario, I guess I could like sandblast it. And I've actually made several powder coated videos because I do actually have black wrinkle powder coat. But I don't know if I want to go that far. But I mean that's pretty involved. I mean it's actually a sandblasting all this will take a while. So um, it is a process. So all right, so I got some goodies over at Marvac. These were on sale for two ninety nine. A switch, which isn't bad. It just be, it's space confined, so I might have to do something, move stuff around a little bit because this, I noticed the slip, slip out goes further out the back. But um, yeah, some of the other ones I saw online because the poles are too far, it would have hit this in here. So hit the hit the PCB. So like this actually had to be shorter. Um, so hopefully I have another room there. But also I noticed that I, I picked up some new casters, but and these are Nitricons too. Um, 47 UF microfarad, 35 volts. So these were originally were um, 47 microfarad, 20, 25 volt, but look how much smaller these are. Um, I did actually hook up my ESR meter yesterday. I tested these, so. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. What's up with that? Um, I mean, it's just a newer technology for capacitors, but... I mean, they're both 85 degrees Celsius, so... Um, don't know. But this one here I had, I had trouble finding. So yeah, I mean, this this is 50-year-old uh, amp, so I've been like to place these electrical little capacitors here. I'm not sure if I showed you guys this or not. I think I kind of showed you part of it, but... So this is giving me the power supply for this amp. Um, this is a 30 amp um, 3D printer power supply. I printed the case for it on and off, so I'm gonna have some leads coming off here. You know, last night on my SDR play, I was, um, I was actually picking up people from um, Missouri. I'm in Southern California, but I was picking up people in uh, Missouri and Oregon last night, so definitely had some good skip, but I mean, am amps are kind of pointless. It's not really, you know, the, the issue is you, they can hear you, but you can't hear them. So I got some power connectors on here. Goes in a 20 amp fuse. So I'm gonna hook it up to my test bench here. I remember yesterday the switch that wouldn't turn on. So here we go. Now I'm gonna back up in case a <laughs> case a cap pops. Okay, looks like that one's on. Okay, cool. We got some power. Looks like this one's stuck in the up position of the preamp. Awesome. Got some power. Yeah, I think the guy's switch he put in there with us and probably rated it for at least 20 amp because the fuse is 20 amp. The switch should at least be 20 amp. So, let's see what it. Okay, it's still gonna 1.5 amp. Well, I guess it's hard to the preamps on. So let me, uh, I'm, I'm gonna replace the switches over here and we'll test it again. All right, got the preamp done. So observe the, the, what's it called? So 1.5. 4 amp without the preamp on. Preamp, so it goes up about uh, 100, 100 milliamps. So I, it's doing something. All right, so I have my capacitor tester. Um, I just, it, it's, it's thrown me off how these capacitors are so much bigger, even though they should have the same rating. These actually even have a higher rating 35 volt, 47 microfarads. Let's put this on my tester. Fifty-seven. Yeah, see, these are Nichicons. They're Japanese capacitors. Um, okay. All right, let's test this one here real fast. If I can get it on there with one hand. Okay. All right, so the other one was high, 57. This one's low, 43. All right, so I'm going to switch out some of these uh, LEDs I have. <laughs> so these blue ones, I have multiple different colors. Um, I think I bought these a long time ago for a 3D printer project. But inside there, if you can tell, this was, these are designed to be run off 12 volts. And inside the wire in the shrink wrap is a resistor to just step it down to the right voltage for that. So I'm going to desolder the stuff off here. These two can be replaced. I'm not sure about this one because... I'm not sure the polarity, like what's what, because this one fluctuates depending on like the load. So I don't know what the, what's it called, the anode cathode? Um, what side is what, you know, so I have no idea. I guess I can kind of try to figure it out, I guess, but. One thing I did notice is that when I do that, the uh, turn the SSB, AM SSB, switch, especially when it's powered off. See, at least I know the relay is working. Try that again. But it doesn't do that when I actually have an AM mode. So, right, so now I'm going to figure out what connectors I'm going to use on this thing. So I actually have the Anderson power poles, which I, I think I'm all ham are into this. Um, and then I have the XT60 or it can be XT or TX60 um, connectors. I, I have more in the thing and I um I also the deans here too. So and these are all kind of pretty much high current connectors. So um I gotta finish my power supply here. So I gotta print out the thing here. Because I can't even test this until I have a power supply that's strong enough to to do this. So I'm gonna print out my little adapter piece. I think I'm just gonna run some wire out, you know, three because I'm actually gonna power multiple devices with this power supply. So I think I'm gonna fish out Three, three wires, 
three connectors. I'm gonna do the XT60s. I just I love these connectors. I, I don't. I mean, the, I mean, I've, I've done the Anderson power poles before, but I like these so much better. These just they solder on. They had this nice back crimp. So I got to do the uh, females to begin on, on the power side. This would be on the on the equipment side. So you have less likely to, to short the two contacts if you do the female on the power source. Like typically on a lipo battery, this this side would be on the lipo battery. All right, so this box looks familiar to you. Um, I've actually over the, I designed this a couple of years ago, but I've made a lot of adapt or different variations of this thing. And originally it was my printer box. See that box back there? But this new version is actually uh, service mounted. So the four holes, and then I got better bending here in the back. So when the fan kicks in, it basically gives a bit better bending because it's going to be up behind there. So I was going to do three, but I decided just to do two. So all right, sun's so going down. Got the power supply going. So we should have power. Yep, green light. Okay, well, it didn't blow up. It's a good sign. All right, cool. Um, so tomorrow, or next time, I have to get the CB gun so I can test it. Um, but the main thing with one of these amps is you need a, a CB that you can turn down to about one watt. So you overload the amp. So not all these uh, CBs actually handle it. Like these cheap CBs, like the little ones here, you can't really mess with the, the uh, transmit you know, gain or whatever, you know? I do actually have, I'm not a radio guy, so don't even ask me radio questions. <laughs> Or make fun of me because I don't really know that much. Um, I'm actually I work in IT, so you can ask me all IT questions you want, but um, you know firewall questions. But all right, so I have an RF tab, so I can actually pick, I can capture the the signal and put it on my oscilloscope. I also have, uh, like I said, I can check it with my my SDR RTL. I have a SDR play and also an RTL. Um, all right, so I'll be back tomorrow and we'll do a test.